Jesus. Amen. Amen. Dear Father and God, we come before you now. We come with a heart of thanksgiving. We come with an attitude of gratitude. We come lifting our voices. We lift our eyes unto the hills from whence cometh all our help. For our help comes from the Lord. So now, Lord, we submit our will to your will. Our ways to your ways. Be large. Occupy all space. Cover every crack and every crevice. Father God, take control. In this place and those that are in their homes, take control. Guard us, Father, in our minds, in our mouths, and in our movement. Let our bodies now prophesy of the goodness of the Lord. We thank you in advance for all the good things in which you shall bring. We pray that this day is pleasing unto thee. Lord, as for me, I ask you for accuracy, for boldness, and for clarity. Help me say it right. Help them hear it right. And help us all go do it right. In the name of Jesus. We are careful, dear Lord, to bless your name on high. We give you all the praise. Now, Father, we pray that you open the eyes of our understanding that we can be better on this day than we were on yesterday. These things we pray in Jesus' name. And all that love him said, amen. Amen, amen. amen. You can be seated for a minute. Uh, I will ask you to stand again, but you can be seated. I wanted to... Um, First of all, give all these millennials a shout out this morning. I mean, my goodness. I was like, oh my, oh man. I was like, y'all set a bar, bar that is very high. Amen. But y'all do y'all thing. Amen and give God the glory. Amen. So we wanted to definitely, y'all even pull Sanders in there. Amen. Even has Sanders with his acting debut as Uncle, what, what was Uncle Phil. And who could play that better than Sanders as Uncle Phil. Amen. Very authentic. <laughs> so we are so grateful, so grateful, and we do look forward um, for us in the upcoming weeks, amen, uh, as God just blesses us throughout our fasting. I pray for those that are uh, joining us in our fast uh, today being um, the um, 17th day, amen, and uh I don't know our scripture for today, so I thought I would grab hold of um, a booklet. Amen. And our scripture is Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Amen. That's Genesis 2 and verse 7. Amen. So we want to be mindful in terms of to read our scriptures. And y'all doing okay with your fasting? Okay. All right. Doing great. It's okay if you're struggling. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, that uh, that uh, it's supposed to be that it's supposed to be uncomfortable and it's supposed to be something that you have to set your mind to do. Amen? And um, so we pray your strength in the Lord. Also, this is a holiday weekend. Okay. 
maybe y'all still uh, intoxicated off of Christmas. <laughs> this is a holiday weekend, and uh, we thank God um, for the holiday as we celebrate the life and legacy of uh, Dr. King. Amen. Uh, but Amen. We, give, we give God the glory. Amen. 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 Um, something missing. I, they broke into my truck. And they took my iPads, and I'm a little bit, I got to kind of find my way here because I'm so used to that. And so y'all kind of bear with me as I adjust on the fly of getting my bearings together because uh, um, I don't have my helps. <laughs> but I got the help, so I'm going to be all right. Anyway, y'all kind of dry, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I ain't, I ain't going with you. with me? Okay. With me. Okay. So, so um, I, I, uh, I don't have all that with me, so I had to bring my Bible out, my actual Bible uh, today, and, uh, and I couldn't find the one I wanted. You know, I have uh, some older ones that I was looking for because I wanted to talk about something this morning. And uh, that uh, they would on me to talk about and and really just teach from something this morning. All right. All right. So that being said, um, let's uh, draw your attention to Philippians four. Philippians four. And when you have that, you could uh, rest up on your feet. Philippians four. Amen. Um, and those at home, if you would turn to Philippians 4, and we're just going to read into your hearing four verses, but uh, I want to deal with something that Paul gives us uh, some prescription for. If we could just take our medicine, I think we'll be better. And we want to uh, look at it in the book of the Philippians. All right. Philippians 4 and go to verse number 1. It says, Therefore, my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I implore Judea and I implore Synthesy to be of the same mind in the Lord. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. We'll stop right there. Because I want to talk about a minute, for just a minute, a fly in the ointment. A fly in the ointment. I want to talk about harmony. Harmony. Because God wants harmony. But when there's a fly in the ointment, it could mess up the whole job. Amen. 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 So, Father, we bless you right now. We thank you right now. And we're just careful to give you praise. Now, go ahead of us and do your thing. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, as you see, say harmony. 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 Put it in the spirit. Harmony. And I wanted to use this for this teaching this morning because there was something special about the church at Philippi. And Paul knew it. Matter of fact, he knew it firsthand. There was a great spirit there. Hmm. A fragrance in the air. This particular letter 
was very positive if you compare it to other letters. And look, now as it begins to close, Paul finds himself having to correct something. Hmm. He comes down on a couple of people. And he even names names. Not because there was a huge problem. Hear me now. Not because there was a huge problem, but because there wasn't. And he wanted to keep it that way. Somebody ought to say amen. He comes and he looks and he doesn't want us to be ignorant of the devil's devices. Especially when God is at work. And you're doing good things and in the midst Satan strikes. Doing good things. Doing good things. Doing great things. And right in the middle Satan strikes. Hmm. So when I looked at this, overall, things were going good in this church. And there was a pleasing aroma in the air. But now Paul comes to a place where he has to pull out a couple of dead flies. that are in the ointment. There was a disagreement between two women. Between two women. Now this could be anybody, but in this case, it was two women. And I don't know if it was personal. I don't know if it was just something now that had started to spread. But it was between two women that he names and calls their names out. I don't know. It could have been over something silly. Something over something trivial. Over something just really that was insequential to the ministry. But the more I looked at it, the tension in this text is a blessing. And we're going to talk about it. The tension in here is a blessing because we can see clearly Paul's heart of a shepherd. A shepherd's heart of love for the sheep. In the way he tenderly confronts them. So I need you to pay attention because I'm going to answer your question from this morning. That the way he tenderly confronts them. Sanders, of course, not here today, but you know I had him as my example because I always tell him in your approach, tenderly, okay, yeah, tenderly confronts them. Hmm. It's good that they were confronted, and it's also good it was done with love. Hmm. And by the time we get to verse 4, now he reminds us to rejoice in the Lord. Because it ain't about us. It's about the Lord. I just thought I'd pull over right there. It's about the Lord. So the first thing I want you to get for those at home, I want you to get that the first thing Paul does, he addresses the people. He says, therefore, my beloved, and long for brethren, my joy and crown. Boy, ain't that pretty? So stand fast in the Lord, beloved. I want y'all to see this. Please don't glance over it because most of the time we jump over verse 1. But let's go back to it. Therefore, my beloved, and long for brethren, my joy and crown. 
So stand fast in the Lord. If you notice there, if you notice there, boy, he butted it up real good. Mm, but it up real good. Now he gonna tell them something, but he's butting it up real good because he's letting them know he loves them and so does God. So he speaks in verse one with a note of tenderness. He doesn't charge in with anger or fussing or in some cases cussing. He's obviously not mad at anybody. He has compassion and tenderness. Now, the more I examine this and really more give you more of an exegesis, it's to understand that he calls them my brethren. And so you got to understand why that's important because he doesn't use this term loosely. He says, my brothers. See, we kind of throw that around. We kind of just throw that around and use it loosely. But understand that Paul is calling them brothers because he means it from the heart. He means it from the heart, and he's not just throwing it around because not like us just calling each other brother, but really don't mean it. I like this because Paul in this final chapter says, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for. Mm. I like it because he says now, my dearly beloved, let them know that it means that you are loved. See, he's got to help them understand. He's got to tell these two women, you forgetting just how much you loved. And you, you, you got to understand, not only are you loved, you are dearly loved. Boy, y'all should have heard me shouting all by myself. Because when I understand, I understand what he's doing here. He's trying to get their attention on the right thing. Because everybody want to be right, but don't want to do right. Hmm. Letting us know not only are we family, but we are beloved of God. And because they are dearly loved by the Father, they ought to love one another. Can the church say amen? amen. And look at what he says. My crown, my joy, and my crown. Boy, Tommy, that's good stuff. Listen, in my best love uh, imitations, I couldn't come off this good. So for all y'all out there that, we, you know, that desires a wife, better learn from Paul here how he introduces things. My dearly beloved, my joy and my crown. Hmm. He wasn't about to let the devil take away the years of labor right, right, right. that what he had poured into them. We spend too much time together. We've come too far. We've done so much to bring God glory. We got to make sure the fly don't mess up this ointment. So look at what he does. He turns this tender beginning, and now he gets firm. He tells them, stand fast in the Lord. Hmm. Stand fast in the Lord. So, so when you search it out, it's the picture of a soldier who refused to budge. Even when the onslaught of the enemy is approaching, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stand. And when I've done all I can do, I'm going to stand again. Why? Because he understands. He doesn't, he, he, he's saying to you, don't throw down your weapons. Don't even think about retreat. Don't yield 
one inch. Stand. Stand. My dearly beloved, you got to understand that when you're doing work for the kingdom, when you're doing work for God, the enemy going to always show up. Gonna always rear his head. Gonna always, and what you must know, you cannot get disunity into unity unless someone in unity brings it in. So if you and I are unified, the only way disunity gets in, one of us has to bring it in. Hmm. Paul said, no, stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. Because Paul now is shaping up the team. Before, before the ointment is spoiled. Not waiting until the thing blow up. Not waiting until it get out of control. Not waiting till now it's too far gone. But he's doing it before. Because all it takes is one little fly. All it takes is just one little item. All it takes is just one little thing. And all of a sudden you ignore it and it go from a cub to a lion. So I say, yes, Lord. Y'all all right? Okay, let's, fi let's finish with Paul. There's a problem here in the church. And all through this, this church was really being commended. This church was on fire. But Paul recognized there's a problem because there's a fly in the ointment. And I don't want it to spoil the beautiful fragrance in which they are enjoying. Having a good time. Mm, let me pull over again. Having a good time. Enjoying the Lord. On fire for the Lord. Uh, listen, having warfare prayer. And all of a sudden, here come the enemy trying to get in. Don't you bring him. Understand. And do not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. So he reminds them that they are brothers and sisters in the same family, beloved of the father. And they need to recognize the real enemy is not each other. Oh, help me, father. And the real enemy is not one another. Hmm. But it's the destroyer. It's Slewfoot. It is Bezebub. Lucifer. Hmm. The Lord of the flies. So let me pull out my Malcolm X for a minute. So don't you be bamboozled. Don't you be hoodwinked. To thinking now is something else. Hmm. Stand fast. Stand fast. So he addresses the people. But then he addresses the problem. Let's go to verse 2. He says, I implore you, I beg you, Judea. I beg you, Synthogy, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Now, what, what, what really got me with this, when you actually get them and understand their names meant prosperous journey and good luck. Boy, I started shouting all by myself. See, they didn't even know their own name. They didn't even know now the destiny of their life. They mad. I don't know if it was a male thing. I don't know what was going on with them, but that was a problem. And their very names meant something, but they were acting the opposite of their destiny. Prosperous journey in 
And the other one's name was Good Luck. So he addresses the people. He addresses the problem. And the more I got good in this, he noticed now how personal this is because Paul calls them by name openly. So if now you do a, a injecture into this text, it would make you think whatever they was arguing about has spilled over and became public. And Paul said, because it's now public, I got to deal with it publicly. Hmm. So he what? He calls them by name. Verse 3 will tell us the ladies were saved because now in verse 3 it lets us know and we as Christians, we have to understand that we're capable of things. We, 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 at times we mess up. Hmm. Because we were once lost. And we are capable of things that lost people are capable of. Because the two women were saved. They both think they are right. And now we have the church taking sides. <laughs> Well, it's right there in the text. They said, don't mesmerize on me. It's right there in the text. And witness now, Paul says to them, he gives them the remedy, be of the same mind in the Lord. Why would he say that? He, well, he would tell us that because when you try to use your mind, you become self a preserver. See, because what we do, we try to defend self. And because we are preservers of self, we are preservers of self, we're going to defend self. And we end up arguing because we want to be right. When scripture tells us, do what's right. Because hmm. in God's eyes, it's not about who win the argument. It's who will now obey. Amen. Let's look at him. Look at him here. Be in the same mind of the Lord. Because once you submit to Christ, you have to get along. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hmm. I'm reminded right now of a time years ago, years ago, Going back into the 90s, we were at my home, and we used to do Bible studies at my home. Uh, long before we started the church, we were doing Bible studies, and, and uh, I didn't even have no furniture. What we would do is clear. We had no furniture. The home I'm in now, and we had it all cleared out, and we would just put chairs in, and we would have Bible study. We would host there, and that was a problem inside the family. With, with, um, with some relatives of, of my wives, uh, with some relatives, and there were some issues there, okay? I mean, she always say, my deacon and my members, so my wife's family. Uh, uh, there was a problem there, and, and it, it got heated, but we were there for Bible study, and we were there for prayer. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember clear as day, we formed a circle to pray, and I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to pray because I felt they were wrong, which they were, but I felt that they were wrong in their behavior and what they did. They were wrong. And I wanted to get that straight before I even pray. And they formed this circle. True story. They formed this circle. And boy, you know how your body language can prophesy. Let me talk about me for a minute. Y'all sit up straight. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about me. You know how your body language can prophesy? You know, your shoulder like, man, I ain't really about this here. Now we're talking about prayer. We're talking about prayer. I didn't want to enter the circle. 
And what happened was, and this and Jessica will back me up, um, what happened was all of a sudden a breeze blew through the house. Now, it nothing strained by breeze blowing, but this particular breeze, everybody felt it. And it became now the focus of, whoa, blew through the house. The Lord told me to get my little self in the circle and pray. See, the thing I knew, I knew I couldn't pray and be mad at the same time. So if I got in the circle, I had to let go of my anger. And I didn't want to let go of my anger because I wanted to be mad. But the fact of the matter, when the breeze came through, I knew it was God telling me, get yourself in the circle. Because now it's your house. And you're the leader of your house. Regardless if you are right and you think they're wrong, I need you to now do what is right. And in the story, of course, I got in the circle. And I prayed. Matter of fact, I had to start the prayer. And I'm here to tell you right now, you want to kill your anger? You want to kill argument? Get people to pray. And if they pray sincerely, it is no way, no way you can be angry and sincerely pray to God at the same time. You can't do it. Because one of them got to go. Be of the same mind. So I often tell people, if you're going there to the prove, if you're going into a situation or a meeting or a conversation, and you're going there to prove you right, that's your flesh. And what you should do is pray. Because I would rather have God right. Hallelujah. And me wrong all of the time. Because whatever he say is right is right. Be of the same mind. Be of the same mind. In other words, walk in harmony. Say harmony. Harmony. See, because we can be different and have different opinions and have different views, but we still must come together in harmony. Amen. To what? Make music for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Hallelujah. See, 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 I'm, 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 I'm reminded again to try to give you all some illustrations. We had this gentleman years ago by the name of Deacon Smith. Deacon Robert Smith was his name. And Nehemiah, Deacon Robert Smith, uh, was a, well, one of my old school deacons and uh, loved him, loved him, and he loved me, and, and we had a great relationship. But it was so great that Deacon Robert Smith put me off the praise team. <laughs> just broke my little heart because he told me that I was out of tune. And it was messing up the harmony. Amen. So literally, and here's the thing, let me double down on this. It was in my own house. You know we was close. It was in my own. So when I tell y'all, y'all got to handle criticism, I'm not telling you this just to tell you this. I'm telling you the truth of what you have to understand. He was right. That's right. That's right. I didn't like how he said it. That's right. That's right. But he was right. That's right. That's right. And then it was on me to go what? Do right. That's right. That's right. Either I get my harmonies down, get my tools down, or sit down. Why is that important? Because anything that throws off harmony, anything can mess up 
everything. Hmm. So, we must be playing the same song and we must play it in the same key. All right, let me finish. Watch this now. So, we come to the realization that there's something bigger at stake than having your own way. And that it is the Lord must be glorified. Amen. The church must be unified. Amen. So the work now of God can be glorified. So if we don't agree, then we have to learn how to disagree. But still do it in love. I want to I want to give you this last thing out of these little verses and it'll make sense to you. He addresses the problem, he addresses the people, but he also addresses the peacemaker. Never saw this before. Never thought about it like this. Look at what he says. I urge you also true companion. Now boy, I had to go digging on this. I urge you also true companion. In other words, yoke fellow to help these women who labored with me in the gospel with Clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are written in the book of life I thought this was good because now he goes people problem but now to the peacemaker he's talking to someone in the church hmm Amen. Amen. And this time, he doesn't use their name. But he simply calls them true yoke fellow. It's obvious that he's talking to an individual that everyone would recognize. And he calls him true companion. Because a yoke fellow is one that works well with others. Hmm. And in this, he's saying to that person, in other words, I entreat you. I need a favor from you to help these women get along. I don't know who or she was, but what I do know is they were a peacemaker. So as we now open this up, God is looking for peacemakers in the church. Who will lovingly help the immaturity grow to maturity. So that now they can see what the bigger picture. Because a young fellow don't take sides. They're there what? To make peace. They don't listen to gossip. They're not part of the division. They only want healing or restoration. So the more I looked at it, the more I looked at it, that's letting us know into 21st century church that even in the part of this, he calls out the two women that have to be people among us that make peace. There have to be people among us that now that will go into the fire now to what? Put the fire out not throw more gas on it. And he goes to them and says, listen, I need a favor. I need you to step into this. What do we have in the church? We have too many people taking sides. Too many people now observing from afar and then giving their opinion off of what they have observed. And God is saying, you got to go in there and what? Take over. And make peace. Hmm. Y'all hear all the silence? Well, Pastor, you know, I ain't want to say nothing because that, you know, that ain't really none of my business. And, you know, I ain't want to, you know, and I know, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I, I ain't like him that much either. So, you know, I, I see what, well, no, we need, listen, I need a favor. Let me come on. I need a favor. 
I need a favor. I need you to be able to, because why? You are a true yoke fellow. You are called now to be fire extinguishers, not arsonists. Mm, that will go into division to create the unity. The Bible says, blessed are the peacemakers. It, it, is a, it did not say blessed are those that like peace. Blessed are those that are peaceable. It says blessed are those that will go in and make peace. And both of them may come out there mad at me. But that's okay. I'm here to make peace. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hmm. Yoke fellow. Y'all like that, huh? Yoke fellow. I want to hope I can count on you. Because there are going to always be fires in the church. The question is, do we have enough fellow yoke? That will what? Step in there to not take sides, to not say who's right or who's wrong. God is right. And we need to come in and do what's right. Hmm. Y'all all right with that? All right, let me finish here. So, at the end of the day, we want him what? To get the glory. And he gets us to the point where now he says what? Rejoice in the Lord. He's reminding them. Reminding them because all throughout the, the, first, the second verse, he's telling them because they got their minds on the wrong thing. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say to you what? Rejoice. Understanding that this is not about you, but it's all about him. Yeah. Now, I, I, I did this this way because normally if, if I would have done this particular chapter four, I skip over all this and go straight to the mighty verses that are in there. Philippians 413, Philippians 419. And but what I what I what I had to come back to my roots to understand when we isolate a text, what we get is the promise, but we miss the process. And what we end up hearing is the promise of Philippians 4.13, the promise of Philippians 4.19, but we skip the process that got us to the promise. So when we don't now Give it thorough and walk you through what led up to him saying, think on these things. What led up to him now saying, you can do all things. Because I can imagine the two women saying, huh, not me. Well, pastor, you just don't know. And I can hear Paul say, you can do all things. Hmm. Hmm. Well, pastor, we don't have enough. I can hear Paul say, but my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. And when you understand the process, now you better position yourself for the promise. So I would suggest to all of you ministers as you pull out texts and you isolate them, you got to make sure people understand the process to that promise. Because people end up thinking, well, I can do all things. No, that was a process you got to go through so you can do all things. Through Christ, that what? Gives you the strength. Hmm. So the more I looked at it, the more I looked at it, uh, we'll do a little bit more. Okay, I was looking for my son. <laughs> Boy, my son consistent, ain't he? 
he let me know. So he told me I got five minutes. So let me take my little five minutes. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Look at what he says. Be anxious for nothing. He gives us prescription here. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. All right? By prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Then let your request be made known to God. Hmm. So people, here we are, we understand, here are your elements, prayer, supplication, those are your requests. But then now he's telling you, with thanksgiving. See, we have to learn to thank God before we get it. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my healing. Before it even manifests, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my deliverance. I thank you. Now, I've asked you, and I'm going to start thanking you. Why? Because it's already done. And the more, the more I understand when we go to God in prayer, we always want to go to God in prayer in rushed. Frame of mind. Rushed. Or we go to God in prayer after we tired. Of giving Caesar our whole day. Wow. No, we got to learn how to go to God in prayer, in adoration. Yeah. In help me earth, wind, and fire, in true devotion. Yeah. I know y'all ain't got that. See, y'all ain't that. You know, I heard Matthew trying to bring me to my old school. Man, there ain't no old school what you was putting out there. Uh, oh, now your old school is true devotion. It's the elements, earth, wind, and fire. I almost hit a note for y'all, but and y'all say I'm carrying the wrong harmony. But it's true devotion. And I'm here to say to you, if your private worship is authentic, it will spill over publicly. So it is not prayer just for you to say the grace over your food and speed through it and to say you pray. No, you go to God for real, but you go to him now where you are with him and you're communicating with him, but it is now through a authentic realness. Hmm. Then now you're not rushed. Because, Lord, it's just you and me. And he says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, be careful for nothing. Don't let nothing now separate you or draw you or take your focus away from me. From me. When we can get there, when we can get there, we can kill every fly in the ointment. When we can get there, we will now be fly proof. Because we understand that this ointment is too precious to be contaminated even with a little old thing like a fly. And I'm here to say to you, like Paul said, we can do this. Just remind, keep our minds, that same mind that Christ had. Let it be in your mind. And then when you do that, You'll see things through a different lens. Now, people, I'm here to tell you, these two women are the canvas. They're the canvas. They're the backdrop. But I'm here to tell you, this is for your home. You know, to, to we got so many Christians getting divorced. This is your remedy. We keep fighting each other instead of getting down in one place with one mind and realizing who the enemy is that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I already told you what he's coming for, but you keep, keep dancing with him. Thinking that is something mama used to call it, everything that shine ain't gold. Let you know that everything that look good, look pretty, don't mean on the inside. That's 
That's what it is. So I would suggest to you to keep this harmony. We got to look at what Paul is saying. Because here's a church that was in good shape. Here's a church that all through Philippians 1, 2, and 3, he was just talking about his church, wrote a beautiful letter to them. But he closes the letter because he wanted to make sure y'all get the fly out the ointment. For it mess everything up and all the work that you have done that God has been glorified for that you swinging at a net. Hmm. Y'all hear all the applause? They even applauding on the camera. They even in their home because if relationships are to maintain. If relationships are to sustain, we have to have the same mind. The same mind. That's why I lost my mind. So any of y'all that say I'm a little crazy, you're right. Because I lost mine. I've lost mine. I've lo I'm, I'm certifiable. I've lost mine. And I've taken on the mind of Christ. So when I tell you that now I don't mind being last because I know the first shall be last and the last shall be first. When I tell you I don't mind giving because I understand I can't beat God's giving. And the more I give, the more he gives back to me. I don't mind. I don't mind if I have to die because I know I have to die in order to live. And because I have to die first, I'm willing to do it so that I can now live again. So people, very simply, for your own understanding. If you're going to keep this thing called harmony in God's body, you got to have the same mind. It's not about who's right. It's not about who's wrong. It's not about you proving anything. It's about you understanding now that God places difficult people in your path. Amen. But watch this. It's for your growth. Amen. Now, let me say that. Let me say that right in the camera. It's for your growth because you'll never grow with people that are just like you. Amen. You'll never grow with people that say yes to everything you ask. Amen. You'll never grow with people that do everything you say. You grow now with the opposites of life yeah. Yeah. that get on your last nerve yeah. and God tell you to stay there. He tells you like the story of Hosea and Goma. He tells you now, take her for your wife. And even though she's done all of these things, that's the wife I gave you. That's the wife I gave you. Well, Lord, I deserve another. Lord, shouldn't I leave? No, you stay there. That's what he gave you. That's what he gave you. I don't know why he does it, but that's what he does. It'd be like David, and David was complaining about the army, and all of the army was in debt. They were distressed. They were discontent. And God said, that's the army. That's the army. They end up winning many victories, but all of them were jacked up, tore up from the floor up. And God said, that's who you're going to use. Because at the end of the day, it's about me getting glory, not you. People, God is looking for harmony. And we got to sing the same song. And we all got to be in the same key. Hmm. That's why what is universal in every language is Hallelujah. Oh, Pastor, I don't know what to say. Just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just say hallelujah. That's just say hallelujah. And if you can't do that, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mm, okay, we're going to wrap this. People, hear me carefully. Because we're in the spirit of uh, MLK Day, 
I wanted to talk about harmony. I want to talk about the church, and the church has to get back to the same beat. Having that, that one heart, that one mind, that one sound. All of us are fighting because we won't be solo. We won't be recognized. We want recognition. And here's Christ himself made himself a man of no reputation. Don't you know when you humble yourself, God will exalt you? They'll find you like MLK said. They'll find you in the back of the woods. They'll come looking for you. Because now you're in tune. So I say to you, let's get on one accord and understand, thank you, understand what we must do to get this same harmony. It starts with us being what? Of the same mind. Can we do that? Can we do that? Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Whoever said that. Barbara. Oh, Barbara. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Barbara. You should be shouting. Yes, you should. Amen. Amen. So bless. let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. And we bless God. For those that are with us uh, by virtual, I'm going to ask you to please stand with us. Because we, we want to stand in a oneness. Not a oneness with, with a name on the wall or a oneness with, uh, with a pastor. Or, no, a oneness with God. Amen. And all of us, all of us are flat-footed. All of us are on the same plane, level. And God wants us to come into this oneness and be able now to be these drum majors. Amen. For what is righteous and what is just. And I think he drew me to this passage because tomorrow I'll be talking about cooperation on morning glory. But it's this oneness, this harmony that he wants in the body. And the body is singing all different parts but there is no harmony. And there's a, a mixture, but they're in the wrong places. And I think for us to be strong, particularly in times like this, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I know who the enemy is. I, I, know, who, I know where the enemy is. Listen, I know who he is, and I know he's listening now. Amen. I know he's listening now because he's in the air. I understand that. But we have to now be able, be able to create our own atmosphere. Create our own atmosphere. And we have an, a beautiful opportunity to show them just what the kingdom of God looks like. Amen. 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 The church is in a place and I'll sit down. Um, I'm closing, um, Jared. Um, the church is in a place where we, we got to look around us. And I keep harping on this with uh, Dr. Uh, Raphael Warnock. Because what I was so excited about, not just that he won. I was super excited about that because a black man has never won the state of Georgia. Uh, not not in a statewide race. And I was so excited because he won, but I, what I was more excited about, he didn't drop who he was. He lets you know he's Reverend Raphael Warnock. And to me, I, maybe y'all don't understand it, but to me, that is powerful. You know, because he could have put doctor in front of his name. He could have put that and try to but no, this is who I am. And who gets glory out of that? God gets glory out of that. God gets glory. And we're going to need more people 
to not put your light out, but let your light shine. A oneness. A oneness. And if we can achieve that, and we don't have to start with everybody, we can start with a few. And it becomes contagious. And then before you know it, we're making a great sound. Because the Bible shows us that before there's a mighty move of God, there's always a sound. A sound. And he's counting on you to use that instrument of oneness. Amen? Amen. So we bless God. Let's bow. Father, we thank you right now. We pray that what we have done, the words we have spoke, is pleasing to your ears. I pray, dear Lord, that as you use Paul to write, I pray, Father, that what we now read, what we now hear, we can now apply to our lives. I pray that, Lord, that wherever there's disharmony, wherever there's confusion, I pray now that you bring harmony. I pray that we will hear your voice. And while, while the world is shouting, I pray we hear what you're whispering. I pray that we can hear your whisper even in the middle of people screaming. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear that voice that, that speaks to me, that tells me that I need to correct myself, that I need to get myself in line because I need not to worry about the things of this world. So I bless him today. I bless him today. I pray that during this weekend as we celebrate unity, as we celebrate uh, MLK and what he stood for, uh, peace and unity and harmony, I pray we challenge ourselves to look within ourselves and say just, am I a peacemaker? Am I one that will let my light shine even in darkness to go into darkness and turn the light on? Turn the light on. I pray right now, Father, that we will pick up this mantle knowing that we are blessed when we do things such as this. We bless you. There may be one watching that wants to come to know this man that I speak of. This man of Jesus Christ. Come to know his person. Come to know him personally. Come to now where you have a private worship that can't help itself but to come public. Lord, we pray right now, if there's some man, some woman, some boy or some girl, I pray right now, Father, that they now will through their heart's heart authentically seek you. I pray that they cry out to you right there in their living room, right there in their dining room, right there in their kitchen, that they will pause and just say, Lord, I yield, I yield. I cannot hold out any longer. That I believe now that you died just for me. I believe that the grave could not hold you. Death has lost its sting, and it's all because of you. And now, Lord, I make an open confession with my mouth that I need you as my Savior. Right now, Lord, I need you as my Savior. And God has promised that he will come in. He will come in and sup with you. I'm here to tell you that uh, uh, we are no better. We, we, the, the only difference is, is that I received him as my Savior. And the Lord takes care of his own. I bless you right now. I thank you. Father, I pray now over our homes, over our households. I pray, Father, over our finances. I pray over our future, over our families. In the name of Jesus, we plead your blood. We pray that this will be a good year. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I pray we release our faith. We release our faith. We release our faith right now, right in your homes, right now in this studio. Just release your faith. Whatever it is you're praying to God for, just release your faith right now that you believe that it's done. 
in Jesus name it's already done you can do it right in your home just release your faith release your faith into the atmosphere we have the same mind in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we count it already done in Jesus name now believe it and receive it Holy Spirit seal it with the Holy Spirit of promise that it's already done in Jesus' name. Now go ahead and give God a hallelujah praise.